I'm actually super, super keen. Like I've been drumming this thing up for so long. It's, it's actually like, uh, oh, yeah, I can't really put into words. I just can't wait to hear it. It's gonna be sick. All right, all right. We are back in the engine room, here to screw together this engine that's going into Shifty. He is coming to pick it up tomorrow. We've got a fair bit of it done already, but there's still a fair bit to go. So the heads have come back after being sent away to get re-skimmed. They're now exactly where we need them. So they've been assembled and are ready to go onto the engine. One of the big, big jobs that needed to get done was file fitting the rings to each cylinder. You've got four rings per cylinder, eight cylinders obviously, and each ring pretty much needs to be checked on average about three times to get it bang on. It was super duper time consuming to file fit the rings. We actually had, we majorly underestimated how long that would take, just that one job. So we finally got it all done and we're glad that we spent the time. Um, we also, we, we don't have a, uh, a ring gap tool, even the hand ones. Um, you can get electric ones really nice. Um, so it was all by hand. Right, here we go. This little file here. So it's flat on one side, curved on the other. We're just filing these rings down one by one. Um, took a super duper long time. One thing we really wanted to check was those Conrod bearing clearances. Um, just because they're a spool rod, they're using the AERP 2000 rod bolts. They've all been sized and stuff from the factory, like they were bought that way. So they're made to fit that shit. Um, we just really wanted to check and make sure, given the RPM that this thing's gonna see that we get these measurements absolutely bang on. So one of the things that we did to ensure that that goes smoothly is to get two sets of rod bearings to chuck in the engine. In order to get exactly the clearance that we need for this motor, you can mix and match bearings from each of these sets to get a fine tuning of the clearance on your rod bearings. Getting rid of the burrs there, bro. Yeah, you know, I'm just giving a little bit of a uh, tickle up. So because we manually file fit the rings, like I was saying before, there are some little, it leaves like a few little burrs and stuff that we did try and clean up, but just um, this emery paper just gets rid of like the last little bits and pieces because you don't want to chuck new rings in your freshly honed bores and have them scratch all up the side and potentially ruin that finish. I majorly underestimated the time it would take to file fit rings. <laughs> it took ages. It definitely adds to the um, to the build a lot, but makes it all the better. The bottom end is now completely and fully buttoned up. Double check the bolts for torque. We're looking good. So the next job we're going to get onto now is to check the piston to valve clearance. Um, we know it's going to be sweet just based off previous experience and the fact that these pistons have gigantic. Um, like fly cuts pre-cast into them, but we're still going to check so that we know. We've got two of the rockers in with the push rods. Everything's as it would if when it was running. So what's going to happen is we rotate this around once, the cam's going to go through its opening and closing cycle and it's going to make impressions in that blue tack and then we're going to rip everything apart, have a look at those impressions. So they've both been through an opening cycle. Now we take it all apart. Spin it over. Oh, fuck. I didn't fucking spin it over. <laughs> Just doing it up makes the impressions, all right? We installed the cam so that both of the fucking loads are at top dead center at the same time. I don't know. I'm just gonna shut up. It's getting late, all right? It's getting late and my jokes are getting shit. It's getting 
Oh, fucking how did I know that was hard? Guessing shit. You see these push rods, mate? If I show you these push rods, I'm so like keen on these, eh? These are 3 8 push rods. And I love them. Here, I'll show you a normal one. Right. Normal push rod. 3 8 push rod, right? Which one do you want your daughter's boyfriend to be running? That's dodgy. You want the fucking big ones, right? So it doesn't break. So that the fucking push rods don't break. Oh, we're not putting that on YouTube. That's gaming ass. That's not going on YouTube. <laughs> See what happens? I wash my hair once and it fucking goes whoom. It is what it is, mate. What do you reckon we're going to see? Absolutely nothing at all in there. It's not even touched the blue tack. No. This is like a, a good engine. <laughs> oh, bros. Just kissed it. You'd rather have it. You'd rather have, um, yeah, have it this way, yeah. Than be worrying about it. But I know what you mean, it is leaving chamber volume on the table, eh? That's I just got, mean, that's mean got... in, in a build where you're chasing all the comp. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Man, if you were chasing all the comp, you just put a fucking stroker crank in it. Because as soon as you stroke something, the comp goes through the fucking roof, man. Kind of a good shot. You can only really see it on the intake. It didn't touch the exhaust. Yeah, it didn't even get near it, man. There's, I, I would have no dramas putting a massive fucking cam in this motor and not even checking PTV again, bro. I was just like, that's hundreds of hours. There's so much fucking cut out of those pistons. It's like you put a big, big roller in it. You know, that's like seven fifty thousand roller. That's and, what I'm saying, and they make them, so I think that's why being this style of piston, they've been yeah. made to the handle fucking big aftermarket cams, you know. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, this is a big cam, but we're talking. <coughs> about, oh, I'm talking. We're talking actual solid like, cut, like, big solid roller. <laughs> So it's flowing together rather quickly. You and I got on a roll for a bit there, bro, and oh yeah, I think it was probably important that we focused on getting everything talked to spec rather than videoing, videoing us talking to spec. But yeah, um, yeah, I think time-wise, we just had to uh, get into it. Yeah. So. <laughs> I want to sleep tonight. Yeah. All the uh, head bolts have been talked. All the rockers, just doing them now. We put the push rods in. The push rods are directional. There's a bit of a taper on one end and a bit less of a taper on the other. So the less tapered end goes to the lifter and the, the more of a taper goes sort of up to the rocker. As you can see, uh, when the rocker gets on a bit of an angle, um, it needs a little bit of clearance sort of either side. You just knocked in a new... The fresh seal there. Yep. Fresh seals going through all this motor. Um, front and rear, like every single gasket, every single seal um, has been changed out for new. Um, it's got this cool Cletus Valley plate here. So we whacked a new um, new seal under that. But um, it's a cool bit of gear. So yeah, apologies for not exactly getting all of the build um, catalogued and videoed for you guys. Um, we did have to make a call at some point to sort of just focus on getting the engine together, um, just due to mainly time. Um, but so, yeah, all we get to see is the exciting part. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. We, um, we definitely did put a lot of hours into this motor, into getting it right and making sure that um, all the gaps are right, the tolerances were correct. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll cut back in tomorrow and, uh, I don't know, everything's a bit more complete. <laughs> <laughs> so the boys are just doing a few finishing touches in there. Um, so it wasn't only the motor that got put into this thing, obviously the trans was out as well. 
the whole fuel system got done um, and as you can probably imagine pretty tedious work uh, so the guys have been working super hard over like the last week week and a half um, to get that done so uh, we're just waiting for Damo to rock up now um, just having a look around the car and, and like the quality of everything is just exceptional um, like even the we were saying like even the um, the hose clamps are all in a row and that like not like that shit really you know matters but it just shows that if you're willing to go to that extent you know um, it just speaks to uh, the quality and um, the, the mindset that goes into it um, so yeah very cool to be a part of Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all those trips that have oh. Get in and change that timing, mate. Look at that. Oh, mate. Oh, it's all fucking all. <laughs> Professional. You made for it. Um, yeah, up in the... Yep. So, we're just going to plug into the car now. We're going to um, put uh, one of our timing maps into it. Uh, it was running a different one um, that we're not super familiar with, so we're going to change it to what we know works. Super simple, basic. Nice little ramp, um, let's yeah. say 22, maybe 25 degrees of initial, and or 20 degrees of initial, and then we'll ramp it into about 28, um, 28 total, and that'll be nice and safe for the run up. Well, we're pretty much uh, down to the wire now. There's nothing really else to do. We've loaded in a timing map in there, 15 degrees on the starter. Uh, 22 degrees initial timing, ramping into 28 degrees total, um, all in by about two and a half thousand RPM. Things got oil. We've run it on the starter without plugs to get the oil pressure up. It's got no mufflers. It's going to be dog loud. I'm actually super, super keen. Like I've been drumming this thing up for so long. It's it's actually like, uh, I, yeah, I can't really put it into words. I just can't wait to hear it. It's going to be sick. Um, really awesome motor. We're just so glad to be a part of it. Now we start it. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, buddy. Someone snuck in and purposely gapped them. Sabotage. Sabotage, yeah. They're bringing it open double the size, so. 
Damo, fill us in, mate. Fill us in with what's happening. Oh, what are we doing to this thing? Just trying to get it to fire up, feel the tweaks, setting the timing, checking the fuel. Found a couple of little issues with the carby and just double checking the plugs now. Just putting a bit more cap on them. So what were they? What were they? They were at 24, I think. Um, yeah, we might have overlooked capping them. Yep. But, um, yeah. What are we now, setting them to now? Now set at 40 there. And you've adjusted the... Uh, the carb. The idle on the carby. Because <clears throat> the carbs we'd left uh, pretty much. I mean, you'd, you'd done the, the air mixture screws Some on them. Screws and then... But we'd left the... Um, like the open, like the throttle openings, as it was. Yeah. And we found that they are all a little bit out, and the guard protector wasn't quite straight. No, it was the dipstick. It was like that. Well, what was going on? The dipstick was out. That's why it didn't start. So now yeah. I push it back in. No worries. It's gonna start now. It'll start. I can know. I mean, at least it looks good. That's part, that's, that's much like the biggest part of it, isn't it? Well, for me, the biggest part is the sound. The sound, and it's got to look the part. Yeah, it's got to look the part, mate. Burnout engine. Only makes 20 horsepower, but fuck, it looks good. How good's it being camera, man? You just get to stand around and do absolutely fuck all while everyone else slaves away, yeah. hey? <laughs> There's always one. Fuck me. That's touching. Yeah, there's one touching. Really? Been dropped or something. It's not my first backyard tune job, eh? Fucking wing of it. Yeah, what? Well, who picked the name? Yeah, my just my car's been winging it, fucking for years. And he picked it. Nah, nah. We all agree. We. If anyone, if anyone, if anyone it was actually Miles. Yeah, and then he was like this fucking. Miles is. Uh, he was yeah, they look fast. Fucking close. Alright. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's only about 0.6. Fucking burnt. Mate, there's only there's only two gonna, there's only two people getting burnt here. I'm gonna I'm gonna look like a Dagwood dog when I'm finished. <laughs> That's funny because it's true. And then it just peels off like the skin of a Dagwood dog. Next time he's Give me a heads up. Like, hey, you are getting a bit red. Maybe stand in the shade. Hop in the car. Oh, you are so red. Now it's a bit of a challenge to actually just see how red we can get. It happens, <laughs> yeah. it happens to the best of us, boys. Yeah, competition. <laughs> Fuck me. I mean, we're all a bit Caucasian over here, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Some more than others, but... Yeah. <laughs> Me. This guy caught me. Time to check back in. You're probably wondering why we're not looking at footage of the thing running. We ran into uh, a few issues or dramas. Really just one issue. We found out that there'd been a rag left inside the intake manifold. We'd basically been trying to get this thing running, figuring out, trying to figure out why it wouldn't start. 
Damo cracked one of the carbs open, looked down into the plenum and could see a blue rag. So off came the plenum. Um, the rag had sort of um, been left down one of the um, intake ports, thinking far out. Yeah, we all sort of just looked at each other and went, oh, man, this is like, this is not what we need. And what we decided was we're not just going to remove the rag. We're going to take the thing apart and we're going to inspect everything and just uh, make sure that Shifty's motor is still 100% because there are risks of um, if something did go through the motor because we did have it running poorly for a bit, you know, things can get damaged. And, and even though it's a rag, it, it could be, it can push on a valve. There's just a lot of, a lot of things that we didn't know and we needed to check. So the engines actually come back apart and yeah, just basically giving the whole thing a once over to make sure that, like I said, that the motor is ready to skid at some and uh, and not have anything go wrong. Uh, Damien and I just got here today and Today is the day we're going to put everything back together, uh, do a full comp test, and um, if everything's all good, give it its proper first fire up, and um, maybe even go for a few cheeky street laps. We'll see. Well, let's go have a look. checkup and um, just a once over obviously had it started up before sounding mint uh, he's gonna come out bring it out and, and uh, just load it up a little bit 